Mm. Feels good? Yeah. It looks Ooh. very comfortable. Hello guys, welcome back. It's Felicia and Rowena. Today we're actually going to take it outside and get the professionals at Ling Skincare in Union Square, New York to show and tell us their tips on how to properly cleanse, extract, treat, and moisturize the face in one of their signature facials. One of the reasons we went to Ling is because she developed her signature facial treatments based on Asian beauty principles of proper cleansing, exfoliation, and hydration to balance the skin and help to cure skin conditions before they arise. Throughout the years, her clients included celebrities like Naomi Campbell, Alexander Andrew Wang, who's low-key one of my favorites, mm. and Mariah Carey, just to name a few. And Ling also has a holistic wellness approach to beauty and skincare, where mind and body and soul are all interconnected with good skin. And we completely vibe with this philosophy here on Beauty Within. I decided to try their Bye Bye Breakouts, which is a 60-minute facial that's tailored for problematic and acne-prone skin. By the way, this video is not sponsored. We no. want to try something new with our channel where we get experts to share their skincare secrets mm. with us and with you guys. So let's check it out. <laughs> In my life, I've only had a facial twice and never have I gotten a real solid extraction. So the extraction part of this facial was what I was most like concerned about. It was pretty <laughs> intense, yeah. I also expected it to be like those pimple videos where it's like, yeah. <laughs> those ones that you see on the viral videos are like cysts. They're not just like acne. years and years of buildup. Yeah, it's not even considered a pimple. It's a, it's like a, its own entity. So let's find out what the steps were in this Bye Bye Breakout facial. If you've never had a proper facial like us, a facial typically consists of a deep cleansing, extraction of blemishes, exfoliating treatment, and some sort of mask finished off with a moisturizer. So each facial really is suited to your own skin concerns and skin type. So for Felicia's facial, the esthetician started off using a triple action cleansing exfoliator and an organic apple malic acid peel to dissolve dead skin cells, dirt, and debris that's suffocating the skin to reveal fresh, new skin. So the apple malic acid peel is a type of AHA, which we talk about very often on this channel, and it's a naturally fruit-derived ingredient. So she was saying it works well with sensitive skin, and especially because I'm acne-prone, I have hyperpigmentation, I have active and old breakouts, this will just help to slough off that dead skin. Did it sting at all? I remember it didn't sting. There was like maybe three seconds of it on my active pimples. Kind of like when you apply those HA yeah. chemical exfoliating products. But other than that, it was a nice soothing intro. She said you have to cleanse and exfoliate because if you have a lot of dead skin and buildup, which I did, any product that you put on top isn't able to penetrate through the layers of dead skin, which we talked about in our chemical exfoliating video. Extractions. <laughs> and we're talking pore to pore extraction. <laughs> For her, most her like uh, varnish or those any they under the skin. You have to like shut her skin and open it. So this is no point. You have to use the lens and like open a little bit and squeeze out. So she started from the forehead, right? And I always thought my forehead was fine. Like I thought my problem areas were the chin and the cheeks. The reason why she starts from the forehead, I asked, it was like, oh, is it because it's the most, the least sensitive area of your skin? And she's like, mm. yes. And then more sensitive is like down here and everywhere. Yeah, like here. nose and chin and stuff. So it's like starting off easy. She said a lot of my white heads, because white heads are concealed, right? Yeah. They're not black because they haven't oxidized from the air. A lot of what I had here were little bumps that you actually needed that to um, prick. Yeah, to prick. Otherwise, there's no way it would ever come out. And that way, it would just stay forever under the skin as a bump. So I was like, whoa. And it was like, <laughs> in terms of pain, it definitely isn't painful. It's like a maybe two out of 10. You don't really feel it. And I think my pores are definitely largest on this cheek region. So when she was going through it, it didn't hurt again, but I definitely felt a lot of pain towards the chin. So sorry. And the chin was the bloodiest. Oh yeah. Oh my. <laughs> it was like if there's a mosquito like stinging you and then you slapped it like multiple times and then it just like all over her glove. Ew. By the time it was, I was like, 
This is infected already. Oh. So you have to clean all those infections back. So if you just leave it there and you don't do anything, it's going to scar? Yeah, you have a hole. She said you're supposed to squeeze it to the point that all the blood comes out, the blood contains the toxins, which then leads to hyperpigmentation. If you just get that top bit out and you leave all the toxic blood in there, that's what leads to the darkening and that's what leaves scars behind. When we get these big hormonal kind of blood-filled ones, they have to do it. Otherwise, it's really painful. And I remember like my eyes were tearing just for, cause I had a cluster, a volcanic cluster, three of them here. But you know what the interesting thing is? It's a week after that facial, I realized the cluster of the blood hormonal acne cleared in two days. What I found interesting was that there's a difference between what comes out. I feel like for yours, there's just a lot of blood, so you can't really tell. Yeah. But some of them have like the grind, the grain of rice, which is my favorite, because it's just like, it's so and satisfying. Then it, yeah, yeah, it like comes out like this. And then there's ones that just, I think because it's mixed with blood, it's just like the, the white just kind of comes out like more fluid. Yeah. So the more fluid is fresher. Yeah. The ones that are like a grain of rice, it's just a little. Older. It's been there for a while. Like it's got a little bit more air in it. So it hardens. So anyway, the extraction process took about, how long would you say? 20, 30. 20, 30 minutes. So then in the facial, she then moved on to a pomegranate detox mask. So she used this mask because it's calming, it's anti-inflammatory, and it just helps soothe your very fragile skin. Yeah. It has tea tree oil to kill a bacteria mm. to wipe after the extraction. Mm. Your gloves look like you just like, I don't want to say it because it sounds kind of gross, but there's like blood. <laughs> yeah, <I know. laughs> you just cut some meat or oh something. God. I had a butcher. Oh <laughs> to be honest, my skin was like, it's been jabbed at. You need to soothe it. Oh, my face burns. Yeah, it's both. Those like uh, for cure bacteria, the, the tea tree oil. And for oily skin, combination skin, acne prone skin, tea tree is such a great ingredient. She smoothed this all over and it was cold. So I think it helped to constrict the pores. And this is like the post pore care, right? So by the end of that period, I was like, ah, okay. And then she wiped that off with cotton pads. The fascinating thing was the whole extraction was done with gloves and tissues. Yeah. Because they don't want to reuse any type of cloth, yeah. any type of materials because it can transfer from one person to other even if you yeah. do clean it so they just poke 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 and yeah. then throw it away da, 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 throw it away <laughs> so and then the last part really relaxing okay after torture <laughs> <laughs> after that stage was my skin brighter or was it still red? It calmed down a little, but it was still red. And after this mask, she put on the hydrator as well as the oxygen serum, mm. both of which we have. And yeah. We've been trying. Out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The hydrator, I remember, is really silky and lightweight. I remember her fingers going all over my face, and I was like, wow, how is she so coordinated? Oh. I remember when I was watching you, this was when I was like, man, I wish someone could do this for my face every night. Yeah. Like, I wish someone can apply my skincare like this every night. It felt so As I was luscious. lying down. Yeah. She was saying that this is an oxygen potion because, like our bodies, we need oxygen to live and breathe, and this applies exactly the same to our skin. What she said was, if you have acne prone skin, even if you have breakouts or your skin is good, you should still continue to hydrate your skin because hydration or lack of hydration is the source of most acne problems. I think that's why Ling's philosophy is just, it works because it's proper exfoliation mm. and proper hydration. Mm. Ooh, a really good tip that her son gave the CEO. Your skin um, is like laundry. If you, when you wash something and uh, in the morning you hang it out outside to dry, when you come back at the end of the day, most likely it's dry. And how did that happen, right? Your skin is the same way. It's the largest organ, it's the barrier between you and the world. And you're facing so many elements, heat, air conditioning, wind, sun, so many factors. But how do you replenish it back? It's really hydrators, um, not necessarily creams and lotions that stay on top of the skin only, but using liquid hydrators that could saturate into lower layers of the skin to balance the skin. So keep that in mind. One mask wasn't enough. It was followed by another ginseng mask. Mm. The ginseng we can eat, we can mm. drink mm -hmm. for energy, for 
are for hair. Was it clear? It's clear and it's really thick. Yeah. So she used like a giant popsicle spatula and just and spread it all on. Yeah. That's what it felt like. When it went on, it's kind of like Vaseline but not as tacky. Oh yeah. And it's just sticky. completely translucent. Yeah. It looks so refreshing. It was so refreshing. That is correct. <laughs> she started using two jade rollers on my face. And I was like, is there a reason you're using two? And she's like, oh, it's just more of a time constraint <laughs> because people don't have enough time to like one roller all over the face. The interesting thing is, like we asked her about the properties of the stones or the rocks um, they used because there was quartz, amethyst, she used jade on me. Um, and we did a whole video all about jade rollers, so you can check that out. Like, what's the difference between using the jade or amethyst rock? Or there the are different, different benefits. For you, for acne, I would like to use jade for detox of the skin. Mm. Mm. You know, they will um, take away the negative, take off your toxin for the surface. She was also saying like go upwards all the time, mm. which was something we also mentioned, right? Because gravity is pulling you down. Yeah. Oh, and I remember her like using the the rollers and kind of massaging this area because there's muscle, the cheek muscles. In the first one here, like this here, you need to push a little bit. Oh, yeah. When people use it, they don't know how to use it properly. You have to like roll at a certain pressure. There's pressure acupuncture points. points on the face. And so I guess she was just targeting that and then using these like smooth upward rolling motions. So that was very calming. I think that's another thing, you know, like self care. Um, this is very much in that zone because afterwards you not only feel brightened, but because of all the processes and the steps that they use in between, you're like lifted from within. <laughs> and then after that, she scraped it off with a paddle pop stick. And she went in with a hot... Yeah, like this ironing. Like the hot iron stone. <laughs> no, it's, just a, it's a stone. It's a hot stone. Oh, yeah. It feels like a hot, but I guess on the neck. Feels good? Mm. Not too hot, right? No. It's a very healing stone. Yeah, and what it does is, like we mentioned these tools before, like the Vanity Planet has this tool. Kind the of hot and cold. Yeah, it pushes it um, into the skin, but it also heats up your skin. And it was hot, I'm not gonna lie. But they do ask you, does it feel too hot? And then they can yeah. take it down. And she was pressing once again to lift my face muscles. Any skin time can use it for anti-aging, acne healing, lifting, water retention. This was so relaxing because this was the very end when I expected my face to look just like a battlefield, like completely red, inflamed, like butchered. But I think that metal thing, it brightened. Yeah, the stone really helped to brighten my entire complexion. I was like shook when I look in the mirror. Let's go into how it was a few days after. So the day after, I definitely <laughs> started to scab, but not in um, like a scabby way. It was just red. And it was something that you could easily cover with makeup if you needed to go out. So it wasn't you... bumpy or it wasn't? No, it was completely flat. So I think overall it took Oh, and it's days. recommended to not wear any makeup the day of your facial. Yeah. So she left it clean. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But I definitely looked like after. a train wreck <laughs> that day. <laughs> it was probably three days in total for all the redness to go down. Mm. Yeah. And then after that, like my forehead is so flat. I didn't even realize, crazy, crazy. Would you go back? Well, I will because she kept saying there's a lot more extractions <laughs> you have to do. So I think, you know, given that we have a more high maintenance skin in terms of dealing with the bacterial buildup and oils, it's probably very beneficial for our skin type. We'll find out about yours when we go we, to yours. That's one thing that I kept thinking about when I was looking at you, I was like, I don't know <laughs> what's gonna happen when I go under the light my world might be turned upside down. There's a lot of hidden things, like yeah. I don't know. So we hope you guys enjoyed that. Let us know if you have questions because a lot of you asked, you know, how do you know what's a good facial or which place to go to? So we highly recommend this place because they believe in the holistic beauty, holistic skincare. Ling skincare started as a esthetician and yeah. then she moved to create her own line because she felt that nothing out in the market 
were as natural as what she wanted them to yeah. be. And she incorporated a lot of traditional Chinese medicinal herbs into her formula. Let us know if you have any questions. Until then, we hope you guys catch up on our 101 skincare series, our hyped video series, and any other ideas you have, leave them below and we'll see you in the next video.